Hello, everybody. Welcome to Game Night in the Region on the Region Sports Network, streaming live on the Internet at regionsports.com, facebook.com slash regionsports, and youtube.com slash regionsports. We come to you tonight from Chesterton High School as the Region Sports Network presents the Andrean 59ers taking on the Chesterton Trojans in a boys' hoop showdown. I'm Jack Dale to play-by-play for tonight's broadcast, and joining me at the color analysis Doug Nelson, good one on hand tonight, a non-conference game. The Andrean 59ers coming all the way from Maryville, Indiana for this great matchup. Let's start with those 59ers, a team that's got a lot of potential this year, especially in their class. We're returning five of their top six starters, come in three and two. They just beat Kankakee Valley 73-56, to and their losses aren't too bad. It's to Lake Central and Maryville, who have been playing exceptional basketball over this past year, and for these enjoying 59ers, it's going to start with Aiden Austin, a 5'7 senior, 17 points averaging on the year so far. Last year, he had two 30-point games for Andrean. He is going to be a guy to really key on tonight. Yeah, again, uh, always great to see you, Jack, but uh, this game is interesting to me for many reasons. Like you said, Andrean, I think, is is poised to make a postseason run. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the sectional lines up pretty well for them where they're going to they're going to be the the favorite on paper. They come in ranked uh, sixth in the two way as far as Sagarin ratings go on the computer rate ratings. So I think they have great guard play, like you yeah. talked about. You got Aiden Austin and you got uh, his brother Alex Austin. They're the, the the sons of the coach. So yeah. you need great guard play to do well in the tournament, and I think they have that. For Chesterton, you were at that game last week against East Chicago. And a little bit of a wake-up call, you could say, for them. They've lost two in a row now, Brownsburg and East Chicago. Like we said, it was an 83-70 loss. Take us through that game. What did you see, and what do they need to work on to get back in the win column tonight? Man, I think, and again, this is another reason why this game interests me. This, that was the most points they were, they've given up mm -hmm. since the 2016-17 okay. season. And that was also the EC, when they gave up 103 points. Wow. Uh, but... I, they gave up over 50 points in the second half. They kind of took it on the chin, Jack. Uh, they were kind of exposed a little bit. So I'm really interested to see how they react. Uh, to la They lost two in a row. Yeah. Uh, this is a team that people were pretty high on. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm interested to see how the players react. Yeah. Who are your leaders going to be? Who are the leaders? Because a great program is led by the kids, not the coaches. Yeah. So somewhere along the line, if, if I was Coach Urban, I would leave that score on the scoreboard mm -hmm. every practice. Yep. Who's going who's gonna to take pride in the fact that we're a pretty good program yeah. and we, we're, we're not okay with that loss? So you know, well, there's a long way to go, but yeah. uh, this, this game could be a step in the right direction for them. What helps that bulletin material is that was their last game, so they haven't really had a chance to respond at that loss. And at home, it was a home loss for them, a team that usually protects their home court pretty well. And they are led by two of the best players in the area. It's going to start with Tyler Parrish. He has been a phenomenal this year, averaging over 23 points per game. And Justin Art Sims, averaging over 15, nine rebounds on two and a half blocks per game. Two guys that were all state selections last year. You talked about it. Players have to step up, and it starts with these two guys. Nothing else needed. Yeah, it's, it's going to have to. I want to, again, Put the points aside, put the rebounds aside, and then I want to see who's going to lead. Yeah. You know, and they have athletes. They got great players. They got Logan Picorni, who can shoot like anyone from the corners. Um, Tobias Ray, who's a great freshman. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it seemed like in the last game against East Chicago, they got sped up a little yeah. bit in the second half, and they did not. Mm -hmm. They looked out of sync the entire second half on both ends of the floor. This is a Chesterton team that does start two seniors, but also two sophomores and a freshman. We're going to stay right here as the National Anthem is about to play here at Chesterton High School. <laughs>
back here at Chesterton High School. Let's go over those starting lineups for both teams. It's going to be in Drain 59ers, Elijah Jackson, a 6-4 senior, number two. Alex Austin, a 5-7 a senior. Then the leading scorer, Aiden Austin, number five, the 5-7 five, guard. Then you have Jimmy Finley, the six-foot junior, number 11. And then at 6-4 at number 55, Paul Gilvitas. And that will be your starting lineup for the Andrain 59ers. Now let's flip the page for the home team, the Chesterton Trojans. We mentioned him, Tyler Parrish, their leading scorer with over 23 points per game, the senior. Number four, Justin Sims, another All-State selection. They have Lucas Picorni, Logan Picorni, the 6'3 sophomore. Tobias Ray, the 5'10 freshman. And Caden Schneider, the 6'7 sophomore. We'll get the nod. Fun fact, he's only played two games this year, one point and two rebounds for Caden Schneider. So looks like he's going to get a bit of an opportunity tonight to show his skills, getting more playing time there on the court. And it should be a good one, Doug, obviously for – let's go with Andrain. What are your keys to the game for them to get this road win? Again, I think it starts with the guard play, uh, offensively and defensively, I think. If the Austin brothers can speed up the uh, Chesterton defense a little bit and put a little pressure on the ball and make them feel uncomfortable, then, then Andrean's got a pretty good shot. But um, if, if they allow Chesterton to do whatever they want to do on the offensive end, then they're going to have a long night. Here is the Wednesday night forecast, which is brought to you by our friends at Economy Electric Heating and Cooling. Tonight's forecast is 36 and cloudy. And that's the game night forecast brought to you by Economy Electric Heating and Cooling. Keeping you cool in the summer. And Cozy in the winter. A big thank you to Strack and Van Til for being our hometown scoreboard sponsor throughout the year. As they are your favorite Indiana made grocery store shop online for delivery or curbside pickup at Strack and Van Til.com. Mike DeWan producing today's game. Saxonelli on the camera as we're set to get set here at Chesterton High School. Non conference matchup between these two teams, but a lot of history. Between them and Drayan leads the overall series 22 to 18. But the Trojans got the best of the 59ers, winning 82 to 47 last December. It's going to be Elijah Jackson and Justin Sims for the tip. Interesting, Elijah Jackson wearing a little bit of a wrist cast there on his right hand. And Justin Sims easily wins that tip. And we're set to get started here at Chesterton High School. Picorni with the basketball up top. He's going to go to Sims on that wing. Hands it off to Picorni. And there's Tyler Parrish, leading scorer for the Trojans. Andrean's Andre coming out a little half-court, man-to-man, pressuring the ball. Yeah, good defense so far here in the early going. Haven't really found anything. Now it's Justin Sims driving inside. Baseline pass to the corner. Now to the wing. Parrish up top of the key. Let's it fly. And hits it. Tyler Parrish. It was great, uh, great patience there by the Chesterton offense. They moved the ball well, hold, not a whole lot of dribbling either. Good moving without the basketball. Yeah, let's see what Andrean can respond with here. Alex Austin had the ball. Now Gavitas back to Austin. Austin, the 5'7 senior, kicks it out. Fake Finley. A little fake pass there. That's his Aiden Austin. Aiden Austin, the leading scorer. Gavitas now with the basketball up top. Looking inside, but a good job by Justin Sims trying to deny that entry pass. Austin now up top, drives to his left, tipped out, but retrieves it. That one's up for grabs, going for the ball. They're going to get a foul. It looks like they're going to get Schneider on that one. He was just going for a loose basketball. You had number 11, Jimmy Finley, going for it and kind of just hit him with the shoulder a little bit. Yeah, Finley was just more aggressive there. Usually the, uh, the more aggressive guy gets uh, things going their yep. way. So they'll pass it out of baseline here. Chesterton leads 3 to nothing. Elijah Jackson. Driving inside, went off of his foot and out of bounds. And an early turnover, 4-59ers to 59ers on their first possession. So Chesterton, who started that game off with a Tyler Parrish three, here with the basketball now. It's that whole rule about taking the ball out of bounds after a dead ball idea. Well, Chesterton trying to end their two-game losing streak. Picorni to Parrish, inside to Sims. Sims posting up on Jackson. Oh, he going to him. his right. He and hooked him. Good call, Doug. There's that hook right there. Yeah. And that has been so focused on, not just in high school, but college and in the NBA, 
they give guys a flagrant for those types of plays now. That wasn't even like a half chicken wing. That yeah. was a full, like, half Nelson wrestling move. That was that was pretty obvious. Yeah, that is a, that's a flagrant in the NBA. When they see somebody do that wraparound, they are quick to call on that. So the turnover by Chesterton. Both teams have turnover now. There's Austin driving inside, but it's blocked. Schneider was right there, but on the follow-up, it was Gilvitas. Nice follow-up by the 6-4 four forward, 3-2 now. I really like Gilvitas' game. I like his help side defense, how he's down in the stance. And look at him communicate. He's doing a good job. There's Sims. A little pump fake right there. And good job by Jackson so far. He's made it tough for Sims here in the early going. Yeah. Parrish now driving to his left. Hands it off to Schneider. Schneider will hand it off. Yeah, I think Gilvitas is really there's active. Sims. Top of the key. No good. The big man can't knock that one. Schneider offensive rebound. Parrish pump faked. Oh, dribbles behind the back. Mid-range shoot. That looked to be blocked. And looked like tried to be saved. It's going to be off Chesterton and Drayen's ball. But that Parrish mid-range looked to be tipped by a 59er. Yeah, I don't know if that's your best shot. I think you can move the ball again, stay patient like you were in that first possession, and get a, get a better shot than that. So and Drayen a chance to take the lead here. Austin going all the way to his brother Aiden Austin. Leading score. Goes to Govitas. Govitas, nice pass inside. Austin with it off the glass and lays it in. Wow, a great find right there. Great look there by Gilvitas and a great finish, but that's a, a good catch and great job there to, by Austin to create space when he did catch it. You said you like Gilvitas' game, and I mean, you see, he finishes at the rim off an offensive rebound and a nice bullet pass to find his teammate. Yeah, he just sees the floor really well. Yeah, there's Parrish now driving the baseline, maneuvering, can't hit there. Gilvitas with the rebound. You got to use the backboard if you're that close. If you're Sims, you got to finish. Trying, trying, trying to gain some momentum. A 4-0 run here after that Paris three-pointer to start things off. Finley up top. Austin to his brother Aiden Austin. Now it goes to Gilvitas. He pump fakes it, drives it inside. A tough one. Tried to bring that one up. He couldn't get it. It's going to be out of bounds, and it's going to be Chesterton basketball. Interesting to note that the, the lighting on the uh, backboard. Yeah, they hit the backboard yeah. to kind of shorted everything out there for a second. I don't know if Gilvitas got confused when that happened. Nevertheless, he loses it. Chesterton now with it. Both teams 3-2 and two on the year. Picorni goes to Schneider inside to Sims. Sims Jackson on him. He's fouled and count the basket. And that's where you got to go. Justin Sims, he's got a presence down low in the paint. Yeah, again, we've seen that play last couple years with Sims. Uh, he does a great, a great job of getting buried under the post. You saw all he had to do was turn and catch and go up. He just sets a good down screen and seals the defender behind him and it was a great look and great finish. They've been trying to work him inside, you know, this whole game in the early going with 4.18 to go. They've been trying to find some type of room for him as he misses the free throw. Nathan, Nathan Nix checks in for Chesterton. There's Aiden Austin. Oh, pulls up for three. No good. And Nix trying to handle that one. He can't, but Austin can't handle that one. Sims pulls down the rebound, trying to make his way through and falls to the ground. And they're going to get a blocking foul right there. It looks like Jimmy Finley might get tagged with this one. There was a lot of contact on that play. You had Sims near the Chesterton bench trying to maneuver his way, a double team, and then just fell to the ground. But uh, the official on the far side ruled that Finley kind of got him with a little hip there. There was a lot of contact yeah. there. It was a foul on somebody. That's a good call by, by Danny Torak. We got a good crew. Uh, Danny Torak, Sean Treese, and Chris Harrell. Really good crew here yeah. tonight. Well, there's an errant pass. Tobias Ray was trying to find Logan Picorni, but just miscommunication as it looks like Anthony Gonzalez is set to check in for Chesterton. He will come in for Tobias Ray. So now a little bit of pressure by Chesterton. Yeah, again, they're going to try to speed it up a little bit. Under four minutes to go already. It's been a fast-paced first quarter. There's Austin driving. Out to Gilvitas. We'll go to Aiden Austin up top. Alex Austin back to Aiden Austin. Aiden Austin now. A lot of dribbling for the 59ers. Good defense so far by Chesterton on this possession. Gilvitas pump fakes it. Almost a steal. Finley drives inside. Oh, nice pass. And finishes at the rim to Elijah Jackson. Great pass there by Finley. Yeah. Little drive and kick. Jimmy Finley, of course, football player as well, one of the best in the area. And track star, too. You don't find too many three-sport athletes no, anymore. No, you don't. Inside, Knicks 
able to off the glass and finish it in. A good entry pass to have him handle that one. Seven to six now with three minutes and counting left in the first quarter. Yeah, Nixon's got to stay, st stay tall, keep that ball high, and keep it close to his body. That was a good finish. Austin, you see they're really working with Gilvitas here with the basketball. Really it expands the court. Austin now. On that wing, makes a little move, goes to his left, now hands it off to his brother. Almost loses that one. Drives to his right. Oh, Euro step, can't finish though. Nix with the rebound, and we're going to get a foul. No jump ball, we're going to get a foul there. A little bit of some extracurricular activities, but going to. Uh, again, down there that low, Jack, you've got to use the backboard. Mm -hmm. Uh, Austin went in there, really good Euro step, yeah. like you said, but didn't finish. You got to put the ball up off the glass. The glass is your back, you know, backboard's your friend. Yeah. So Jerry Triplett checks in for Jimmy Finley. I believe they're going to tag Finley with that foul. If that's the case, that is his second of the night. Parrish to Sims. Inside, Sims now, Jackson on him. Sims going inside, spin move, trying to find some room off the glass and just rattles out. Tough break right there. Aiden Austin now with it, goes to triplet. He just checked oh, he in, and there's a travel right yeah. there. If you're Sims, you, got, you can't fade. Mm -hmm. You know why fade? You're the one of the tallest guys on the court, the biggest, strongest. And you I, fade away, you become as small. And I will say, I mean, it, it, I don't know if it's a weakness, but we said Elijah Jackson, you look at his right hand, he's got a bit of a cast. You know, maybe take advantage of that if you're Sims. Parrish, he's only got three points in the game. Oh, Gilvitas, right there, able to knock that one down, turn it to an Adrian steal. Austin goes up and able to finish at the rim over Tyler Parrish. You have a 5'7 guard going over a 6'4 guard. He's just shifty. He uh, really, when you're when you're that short, you're used to playing against guys bigger than you, yeah. so you got to get used to playing with your body. There's Parrish now. And Drain's done a good job keeping him in check. We, that was the first three of the game he shot. Since then, he has not scored. Gonzalez hands it off to Parrish. Parrish posting up near that area. Nix now hands it off to Parrish. Austin doing a really good job guarding him. But what you remember, that first possession, remember how good the ball was moving? They're yeah. kind of standing around now. That is true. The ball, they had a drive in on the baseline, kicked it out to the corner, and you had Parrish right there at top. This that little, they, they, they screen all the way around and try to post him up on the, yeah. on the weak side block. Trying to find some room. There's nowhere to go. This defense by Andrain has been really good right now. Under a minute to go, they lead 8-7 to seven Sims. Yeah. And there's a steal. Triplet right there. Looking like a ball hawk to Austin. Inside and lays it in. Again. What a finish right there, Aiden Austin. Yeah, good use of his body. Yeah. The way, the best way to beat a shot blocker is by going up into him, and that's exactly what it did. He went right through his chest. 10-7 to seven now, the 59ers lead with 30 seconds and counting. There's inside the Sims. Sims on Jackson. Jackson's done a good job all night on him, trying to find some room to the corner. Pump fake. Oh, nice pass, but it's stolen. And they actually know it's going to go out of bounds. Gilvitas tried to make a diving attempt, but did not touch it. Rolled out of bounds. Justin Sims will check out. Rob Sinersnicki will come in. Yeah, another turnover. Mm -hmm. If you're Andrean, you can hold for one shot here. I think from my perspective, they're trying to force the ball in too much to Sims. Yeah, they got to find a way to do it, uh, you know, Other than be, be creative yeah. way. They got Nick, Nix is in there. He's a big boy, big, strong kid, and they got to find a way to get the ball inside to him, too. Drain leads by three. They have a chance at the last shot here. Austin loses it. Now a three at the wing. No good. Parrish with the rebound, and that's going to do it for the first quarter. But the 59ers end that first quarter on a hot run offensively and defensively. They lead 10 that's seven. We're going to take a break here as you're watching us on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. 
Back here in the second quarter, and Drayan leads 10 to 7. Thank you all for joining us, Track Field. Doug Nelson, we got Mike Dewan and Zach Snelly as well. Doug, we'll start with the drain. They've got a little bit of an edge towards them tonight. They're attacking at the rim. You know, we've seen multiple times where they're five, seven guards, and Alex and Aiden Austin are going right up against a 6'3", Tyler Parrish, and a 6'6", Justin Sims. Yeah, they're, but again, they're doing what they're supposed to do. You go into their body. You don't fade yeah. away. I haven't seen too many Andrean guys fade away. you got to go through the contact, Yeah. you know, and finish. Expect to get fouled. Expect them not to call it, and, and go strong. For in or for yeah for Chesterton I should say, really good start. They've moved the ball really well. You found an open Tyler Parrish. Since then it's been a finish at the rim for Justin Sims, and an offensive rebound and putback for Caden Schneider. Yeah, it, the ball kind of sticks. The ball stays. It doesn't move the ball from side top side very well in their motion offense. And when they do, they it, it's nice and yeah. it, they get good shots out of it. But they they got to commit to that. And Dran starts. The second quarter with the basketball. Nice pump fake by Austin. The floater, no good off that side iron. Rebounded right there by Picorni. Pushing the tempo up the court now. Off the screen. Goes to Parrish up top. Like we said, he had the first points of the game. But since then, he's only had one shot. And it was a contested mid-range. Inside to Parrish now. Parrish, step back. Off to no good. Rebounded right there. Nix all the way back up top. McCorney thought about it. He'll take it. Top of the key, no good. Another offensive rebound. Ray with this one. Yeah, there's the, the flow just seems off right now for Chester. And like you said, it's almost like they're trying too hard. Yeah. They're trying to force things that are just not there right now. Ray to Parrish. Parrish the screen to his right. Wide open man on the wing. Pulls it. No good. Another offensive rebound. Nicks with it again. Parrish slowing it down, letting their offense get set. That's three offensive rebounds in a row for Chesterton. Well, you get, you know, you when you're not shooting it very well and things aren't going your way, you need volume. You need, to, you know, a good amount of shots. So, yeah, pass inside right there. They're going to tag Nolan, or I should say, Micah Jones with the foul right there. When you're struggling on the offensive end, the, a good defense is always your best yeah. offense. We'll have so maybe try to get some stuff in transition, but right now they're. Their, their, their motion offense is kind of sticking. It's not it's not real fluid right now. No. Nope. Justin Sims and Caden Schneider check back in for the Trojans. Paris driving inside. Right-hander floater falls in for the senior. So 10-9 to nine now. Four in drain. Elijah Jackson checks back in the game. Kevin Austin. I should say Alex Austin with it now. Micah Jones with it. Parrish on him inside. You got triplet. Driving inside, a foul. They're going to say it's on the ground. Basket does not count as the drive-in by Jerry Triplett draws a foul. So they'll pass it out of the baseline here. That was a good good drive by Triplett there. He yeah. did a little, little shot fake, square and, square and tear, and get to the basket. That's Schneider's second foul of the game. Aiden Austin now with it. Austin averaging 17 points a game. Also two steals a game as well. Brother Alex Austin now with the seven points and four assists he's averaging. Drives to his right, goes to the corner, a pump fake right there. Nowhere inside, four in drain, they'll dribble it back out. Good defense right now by the Trojans. Austin, the triplet, on the baseline, trying to finish, swatted away by Parrish, and has it himself, going coast to coast, he's fouled. And they're gonna tag number five. Aiden Austin with that foul. That's the second team foul of the quarter by Drain. Tyler Parrish. A good defensive effort by him. Gilvitas checks in for Jerry Triplett. That's what we talk about. It. You know, that was off to a transition, you know, layup. So that's where you, that's where your offense is going to start on a good defensive stop. Parrish directing traffic out there. You've got Caden Schneider with it now. Picorni. Inside to Sims, Jackson fell behind, and Sims able to finish at the rim, and Chesterton regains the lead. I think if Chesterton's going to have a nice season and a good run in the postseason like they, they think they should, I think he's got to stay right there. Okay. I think Sims has got to live in the paint. I know he likes to shoot the three. You know, it's not very a very high effective shot, but he, he's got to live in the lane, I think. Well, there's Parrish with the rebound going coast to coast. Finish at the rim. Oh, Tyler Parrish. All the way. you got to stop the basketball if you're yeah. in Drayan. 
13 to 10 now. Yeah, nice little run here for the uh, Trojans. Our largest lead since that three-pointer made by Tyler Parrish in the beginning of the first quarter. Austin till Gilvitas. Gilvitas missed a three on that last possession. Up top, Austin pump fakes it, driving inside, tough take, a nice pass to the corner. His brother not able to knock that one down. But Jackson right there for the offensive rebound. Goes to Gilvitas, pump fakes it. Open Jones on the wing and hits it. Micah Jones, nothing but nylon. Again, all, off an offensive rebound. You got to limit the, the, uh, the other team to one, one shot down the floor. 13 to 13 the score is now. Sims with it inside. Nice pass all the way across and hits it. That's Tobias Ray. The freshman wide open able to rattle that one in. And Chesterton up 16 to 13. We have a timeout on the full floor by the Andrean. 59. We'll take a 30 second break and be right back as you're watching this on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. 16-13, Chesterton leads as their teams are coming out in the drain timeout. Fun one, both coaches trying to get their fourth one of the year for Mark Urban. He's had one heck of a career so far here at Chesterton. He is second all-time on wins for boys basketball at Chesterton High School. And for Aaron Austin in his third year, trying to find some success. But like we said in the pre-show, he's got a team that can really make, make, make that deep playoff run. Yeah, I really think so. Again, it, goes, it starts with a guard play for Andre, yep. and they're, they're really tough in the backcourt. A little bit of kind of a zone right now by Chester Tate. Yep. Micah Jones with it. Back to Austin. Austin had thought about the three. Oh. Man down for Chesterton. Austin can't hit that off the back iron. Rebounded by Sims. That's a knee-to-knee -knee yeah. bruise right there, Jack. That's, that hurts. That's Tobias Ray on That is ground. bone on bone. Or no, that that's hurts. actually a Logan Picorni. Picorni, yeah. I hope yeah. he's okay. But That's Picorni and... Tyler Parrish, who was out for a brief second. Do not sit down. I would I would keep moving. That's a that was a knee to knee hit, man. That's gonna hurt. <laughs> Parrish is gonna check back in, so only about a 20 second breather yeah. for him. That's all it was. He's gonna have a good bruise on that one. So we hope he's okay with under four here in the second quarter, but Chesterton trying to extend that lead. Pass inside to Sims. A little bit of a double team. You got Jackson on him. Can't finish. It was a tough take, but you got to credit the defense of Jackson. Yeah, there was a lot of good help side there, but that's where I want to see Sims work. And I also, I would like to see him use the glass a little bit. Go strong. Compose yourself. And there is Gilvitas knocking down the tray. He's had a big night so far. He's averaging 13 points and seven rebounds this year so far. I just like his, his effort on both sides yeah. of the court. I mean, look how, look how active he is. There's Parrish off the screen, top of the key. Can't hit that one. Rebounded by Triplett. Now to Austin. Austin dribbling at a moderate pace. Goes to his brother. Way deep three and can't go in. In and out. Tough break right there. Sims now with it. Sims off the screen. Spin move. Driving inside and finishes. I like that. He's getting in the lane and getting down below the volleyball line. Mm -hmm. Not settling. You know, he could have pulled up from about... From 15 to yeah. 20 feet if you want it, but he attacked the rim. I like that. 18-16 now with 225 and counting. Triplet running that baseline. Austin driving inside. He'll get fouled right there by Tobias Ray. That's a second team foul by the Trojans here in the second quarter. Haven't been too many fouls so far by both teams. And Nathan Nix will check back in for Chesterton. And Caden Schneider, the 6-7 sophomore, will check out. That's going to allow Andrean to check in Ben Whitaker. And they'll take Elijah Jackson out. Yeah, good size for size there, but mm -hmm. Whitaker, 6'5", junior. Yep. Gilvitas now. You got Sims on Gilvitas. That's a fun matchup, I believe. Those two guys. Austin now. Aiden Austin, he's been a little quiet tonight, their leading scorer. There's his brother driving to his right. Kicks it out to triplet to Gilvitas. Sims on him. 
Jovitas now hands it off. Whitaker just checked in to the corner. Aiden Austin trying to find some room. Back to Gilvita. Sims on him. Gilvitas hands it off to Austin. Austin driving inside. His floater, too, will bounce right in. Nice patience there. They're moving the ball side, top side. And there's Tyler Parrish quickly pushing the tempo. Now goes the Knicks. The little double screen, little stagger. Knicks Good. inside. Harris drives through his like crossover to the left, spin move, corner, three, it's up, and it's good. Nice shot right there, Jalen Watts. I thought Jalen played really well in the East Chicago game in his limited minutes. He, play, he played very, uh, very effect, uh, efficiently. 21-18 now, Alex Austin with the ball in the corner, driving that baseline, finds triplet, off the glass, and a tough finish by the sophomore. 21-20 now, and a minute and counting left. There's Watts again driving inside, and we're going to get a legal screen, it looks like, by the Trojans. Yeah. I, th I think they're going to get, yeah, they're going to get the freshman Tobias Ray on that, and there's Picorni. Great to see him back right away on the court. Yeah, like I said, that was just a little bruise. He's going to have a good bruise tonight, but uh, Ray just can't get in the flow to, today. Against East Chicago, he started out hot and made a couple threes in the first half, but uh, tonight's not his night here so far. Under a minute now to go. One point game, it's been a one possession game the whole night between these two teams. Whitaker on the wing. Goes to Austin. Austin off the screen. Driving to his left to the corner of Whitaker. He pulls it, and yep. that one is going to go out of bounds. That's a great shot, though. Good penetration, yep. good kick there by Austin. That's, a, that's the right shot for him. 37.7 now left. You can assume Chesterton is going to hold for the last shot. Mark Urban telling his team. You know, slow it down. Let's let's keep the lead and see if we can extend that going into the break. Parrish, McCorney is going to drive inside. They're not going to take the last shot. Can't finish at the rim. Gets his own rebound, but they're going to get a foul on Aiden Austin. That's going to be the third team foul by the 59ers. Actually, they're going to get Ben Whitaker on the foul. Yeah, so. nothing hurt there. Only the third team foul. So Brian Hunter Jr. will check now. The 6'4 sophomore comes in for Whitaker. I was kind of shocked. I thought Chester was going to hold for the last shot, but Bacorny, he drove right in. More size coming in for Andrean. Harris now up top. 13 and counting. Austin on him. Now under seven seconds. Nice crossover. Three from the wing. Parrish! Nothing but nylon. Harris with it. Austin now at a heave, and it's no good. So we'll end the first half how we started the first half. A three-pointer made by Tyler Harris as the Chesterton Trojans with their largest lead of the night. It's 24-20. We're going to take a break here, and it'll be time for our halftime show here on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. When life keeps you busy and you can't get to the store, shop online with Strack and Van Til To Go. Our To Go service is easy to use. Register using your rewards account information, fill your virtual cart, and choose delivery or pickup. Once your order is in, our own Strack and Van Til team preps your order with care. With our To Go service, you can earn reward points and save time and money with our online coupons and weekly ad prices. Life made simple, shopping made easy. For more information or to sign up, visit shop.strackandvantil.com. Scheduling information, cancellations, and articles of... Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's the insurance professionals in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. From schools to stadiums, hospitals, and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree. Earn while you learn. 
and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermakers Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost, hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more, visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000. Can't wait for summer, but dreading to heat because your old AC let you down? Don't sweat it out this summer. Call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling. The professionals there can fix you up. Install a central air unit that'll last for years. Your family deserves to stay comfortable. And with a 24-7 emergency service, comfort is just a phone call away. Give them a call at 219-923-4441. Or check them out on the web at the number 4, a job done right, dot com. While you learn from the best hands in the business, the Bricklayers Allied Craft Workers for Indiana, Kentucky Apprenticeship. That's right, this is a paid apprenticeship. I'm getting an education while learning a trade and getting paid for it. The thing that surprised me the most about this apprenticeship program is the respect I have received after the proper time and training. Classes start soon, so apply now. There are training centers throughout Indiana and Kentucky. We are the Bricklayers and Allied Craft Workers for Indiana, Kentucky Apprenticeship. The best hands in the business. Back here at halftime as Chesterton leads 24-20. Jack Field and Doug Nelson on the call. Mike Dolan and Zach Zanelli helping out as well. Fast pace first half. That was quick as it gets. So with Andrean, ups and downs for them. They had the lead multiple times. They've been able to drive it inside, although they are very sides disadvantage. What have you liked from them, and what do you want to see them improve on in the second half? Again, I think they're they're moving the ball well, getting great shots. They just got to finish inside. Uh, you know, like you said, they can get the ball in the lane, uh, get around people, but you, you just got to finish, and that, that's what it's about. You got to convert the opportunities that you get. If and on, on the defensive side for for Andre, you got to limit Cheshire's second opportunities. Uh -huh. Block out, get the ball, and run. I don't think they've got a whole lot in transition. Cheshire is playing pretty good transition defense right now, but yeah, if you're Andre, just keep doing what you're doing and just convert, just finish the possessions with the basket. For Andrain with the four-point lead, they've also had those ups and downs where they've had the lead. They've been trailing. Tyler, Tyler Parrish has looked really good from the three-point line, but not much has happened inside for the Trojans. Justin Sims has had some problems. You know, Caden Scheider, Nathan Nix haven't had much success in the paint. You know, what do you want to see from them to keep this lead and win this game? Yeah, again, yeah, I think they're they're kind of pressing right now. You know, I'm sure they, uh, they they've lost two in a row. I'm sure it was a rough 
few weeks or a few days of practice for, for Chesterton and, and Coach Urban wanted to make a few points, but uh, they just got to relax and play. Mm -hmm. uh, they got dudes. We talked about it. They got Sims. Yeah. They got, you know, you got, you, got, you got the guys that can play. Right now, it's like they're trying too hard. It's like they're, they're squeezing, white-knuckling it right now. Just relax. Go play, and, and good things will happen. But you got to be patient. Run the offense. Trust, trust the offense. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and get up and down the floor. You see Parrish pushing the ball even on makes. Mm -hmm. You know, you see they want to run, but, uh, you know, I think they're doing a lot of good things, and Sims has got to stay inside, stay off that three-point line, in my opinion, yeah. and, and get in there and finish and use the glass and be strong. Yeah, about 2.30 and counting before the third quarter starts. We'll stay right here. For and Drain, the NCC, obviously a pretty loaded conference in a way. you got the Mustangs, you got Hanover Central, you got Heat, you got Hobart. You know, I kind of want to get your thoughts as we're, you know, getting into the heat of this season. What have you, been your thoughts on the conference? You know, who do you like in that? Maybe you have a dark horse to win it? That's a, that's a really, it's, it, that's a pretty good uh, basketball conference yeah. this year with Andrean and Munster. You know, you never know what's, uh, if Hobart can come up and start playing in the right time, mm -hmm. but... Uh, you know, and Hanover Central is new to the league, and yep. they're off to a good start. So, you know, yeah, I, you know, of course, I think it's it starts with Andrain right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and Munster's off to a good start, and they're, but I, I think, you know, it, I, I just like Andrain seniors. I yep. like their backcourt. Mm -hmm. I, I know I keep saying that, but they're, they're good and at the two A level. That's very good. So, we'll see how far they go in the postseason. But I think they they got a good chance for a run. Move over to the DAC. I mean, going into this year, Chesterton was the favorites. You know, they had the team to do it. So does Valpo. But there's been a couple of teams making some noise. you got the Lake Central Indians undefeated. You've got even the Portage Indians having a good start to the year. And also, don't forget the Crown Point Bulldogs as well. The DAC is very loaded. And although Chesterton does seem the team to take down, there's a lot of other teams who can really catch some ground and be the top dog you, in a DAC. Yeah, you can't forget about Maribel either. Yeah, Maribel, I mean, yeah. They're, they're a wild card. I mean, a couple years ago, they knocked off Valpo in the, in the, in the Portage section. Yep. I mean, you never know. They got, they, they got dudes there. So, I mean, man, any night, you know, any opponent, any night, it's going to be tough. There's no easy nights here in the Doolin this no. year. And, uh, you know, even the bottom, you got Lake Laporte and Michigan City down there. But they could jump up and get somebody. So, anything is possible here in the Doolin this year. For Chesterton, their conference schedule does start January 6th at Maryville. So, definitely, a, that's going to be a tough test for them because then, honestly, the whole year, it's a tough test for them. They're at Maryville at Crown Point, at Lake Central, at Portage, at Hanover Central. Really, they're going to have to be road dogs yeah. to, you know, get better as the year progresses. And they have a tough game this Friday night, which Region Sports will be covering. Penn High School comes to town, 6.30 tip-off time. That should be a good one between those two teams. Penn High School, still a great basketball program after losing their best player, Marcus Burton, who is the starting point guard. For the nerd ain't fighting Irish, but that should be a good one between those two teams. Yeah, again, and then you get into the holiday season. You know, yep. Cheshire's going down to Fishers playing a very mm -hmm. competitive tournament, and I think Andrean's going to play at Highland. That okay. Their tournament's very solid, so it's, a, it's just a really exciting, fun time of the year, and it's kind of a pivotal time. A ride around right before conference yep. play, mm -hmm. man. You, yeah. you're, you're finding out who your groups are going to be, and Who's going to separate the men from the boys? It's going to be a fun one. And we have a good one as well. It's going to be a 7 o'clock tip-off. We'll be live from East Chicago High School. It's going to be them and the Maryville Pirates. East Chicago, not as only their basketball team exciting, renovations to their beautiful gym, one of the best in the whole state of Indiana. We'll be live there, 7 o'clock tip-off, Maryville at East Chicago. So we'll have a doubleheader in the men's basketball in two nights. Remember, 10 Chesterton, 6.30 p.m., Maryville at East Chicago, 7 p.m. And we're set to get here in this third quarter, 24-20. The Trojans lead. They'll start this quarter with the basketball. Let's see how the ball moves here, getting a couple of minutes to make those adjustments. You see where they make they, they, catch, they make Sims catch the ball off the block. Mm -hmm. They're pushing them off the block pretty easily. Well, there's Paris driving inside. Can't finish at the rim. Offensive rebound, Schneider can't finish as well. That's those conversions you got to get. Mm -hmm. So Andrean now. You know, a team that hasn't, you know, with the size, you think they would shoot a lot more threes. They've done a really good job getting those points in the paint. And well, there's Gilvitas from the corner, and it's good. He Gilvitas. heard you. I mean, you got to like the way this kid plays. You you were honing on it earlier, but 
when we started the game, he was making rebounds, you know, creating extra possessions, making nice passes, and now he's hitting threes. I just, I, I just like his game. I like he plays uh, active. He, yeah. He's got active hands and active feet on both ends. I really like how he plays. Well, in response, Justin Sims able to have a tough finish after a win, 26-23 now. Yeah, that's where Sims has got to live. You got to be able to do that on both blocks, too. There's Aiden Austin open in the corner. That one, no good. Sims tips it to himself. We'll secure that one. And he'll dribble it up the court and take his time inside to Schneider. Schneider back to Sims. He's going to pull up top of the key. The big man can't hit that one. Rebound by Gilvitas. They're actually going to get a foul by Caden Schneider. That's one of those possessions. You just don't get that possession back. I think, you know, Sims on the perimeter again. You know, again, I, I, he's got he's got to find a way to get find himself in the lane. I also think for Sims, the type of player he is, with the athleticism he has as well, I don't think the top of the key three pointer is really his go to shot. I think he has a good thing going inside the paint. He's got the speed, he's got the agility, he's got the height, he's got the elevation. You know, so if, if he's fortunate enough to play at the next level, yeah, that might be part of his game. Yeah, but right now for Cheshireton High School, he needs to live in the paint. In high school, that is your prototypical points in the paint guy. You know, you got guys who can shoot the ball. Nice pass to the baseline. Austin, oh, goes inside to Jackson. He's fouled and count it. Nice pass. Elijah Jackson. Tobias Ray on the foul. The freshman, so already two team fouls by the Trojans. That's her third personal foul as Anthony Gonzalez will check back in. Actually, that's going to be Jimmy Finley who finished at the rim on that shot. There's so, Tobias Ray coming out again. Yep. Again, he just cannot get in the flow. He cannot catch a break tonight. So Finley will head to the line and try to complete the old-fashioned three-point play. The three-sport athlete rattles that one in. 26-26 now. And Drain, both of their possessions, which they've scored on, have been three points. For Corny. Nathan Nix now back in the game. Hands it off to Parrish. A little bit of help defense right there by Andrean. Goes to Parrish up top. Finley now on Parrish. Oh, Parrish behind the back. Nice move by him to the corner, to the wing, to the key. Sims now drives inside, and oh, good defense right there by Jackson on the move, and can't finish at the rim. They're going to get a foul from behind. It was Austin, Alex Austin, driving towards the rim. It looks like they got Justin Sims. Yeah, no, he did. Yeah, they're going to get Tyler Parrish actually on the foul. So. Yeah, we talked about, the, again, we talked about Austin, and those guys are smaller, so they got to learn how to use their body and find contact, right? Yeah. So he just he just kind of slowed down a little bit, and Parrish kind of ran him over from behind. Third team foul, and Andrean retakes the lead. How about that contact right there by Elijah Jackson? Yeah, just a strength right there. Just I mean. solid. And Austin knocks down the second one. So Alex Austin, he's had a really good night so far. You know, his brother's the leading scorer, but you know, Alex Austin saying, "Hey, don't forget about me right now." 28-26. He's really been a vocal point of this game. Parrish for the lead. And that one rattles out. And Sims right there for the offensive rebound. Drives inside. Jackson on him. Can't finish at the rim. There's Finley with the rebound. Pushing the tempo up the court. Going coast to coast. Off the glass and in. Jimmy Finley. Nice left hand there by Finley. And now it's 30 to 26. And Drain's largest lead. What a turnaround here to start the third quarter inside the Sims. A little bit of a double team now. One on one with Jackson driving inside. He's fouled and counted. Justin Sims with the aggressive take and finish. That's where he's got to live. I know I keep saying it, but he's got to work down there. Go strong, get to the three point line. Those are the three point shots he should be worried about. Mm -hmm. They add one place. Back and forth we go here in this third quarter. Sims trying to complete a three-point play. The end one free throw, no good. Gilvitas with the rebound. Finley now with it, pushing the tempo once again. I don't think people realize this kid is a three-sport athlete with the speed he has. He's just speed. He can, he's shifty. Yeah. He can change speeds real quick, too. He's explosive. Aaron pass right there from Austin. He was looking for Gilvitas near that Chesterton signage by the Andrean bench, but a turnover. Will allow that the Trojans to take the lead or at least tie the game. Yeah, it's those unforced turnovers. That, that was not necessary. There was no mm -hmm. pressure on them. Yeah, kind of just a forced pass right there. Parrish goes to the corner. Gonzalez hands it back. 
the Parrish. Parrish towards his left, driving inside. Euro step, can't finish, but we'll get a foul at the rim. I don't know if they're going to get Finley or they're going to get Gilvitas on this one. So that will be the second team foul, the first personal foul by Gilvitas, Tyler Parrish. The All-State selection last year will head to the line for two shots. A little, little, little late on the help. When you're late from help side, it's normally a foul. Parrish, he misses the first one. Knicks will check out a game, and Rob, this is our Nicky. Nicky will check in. Parrish doesn't miss too many from the free throw line. Parrish able to convert the second one, though. As well as substitution, number three, Jerry Triplett. Checks in for Elijah Jackson. I think we're seeing a pattern here. Whenever Sims, or I should say, usually it was whenever Sims checks out, Jackson checks out, but there it looks like they're going to try to match up maybe Gilvitas and Sims. That's been a good matchup for Andrean tonight, but they're going to have Sims on triplet right now. Look at triplet. He's a sophomore, but he looks like a man. Yeah. That dude's got some muscle definition. He, he looks like a, he's only a sophomore. He looks like a senior. Gilvitas. Driving to his right, goes to Aiden Austin. Nowhere to go for him, Gilvitas now. Long pass to Finley. Able to secure that one, moves to his left. He's got Parrish moving, but oh, behind block off the rim. And now a fight for the basketball. We're gonna get a jump ball, it appears. It is. Great hustle by all of them, but uh, and Finley should have stayed with the left hand on that one. He went to the right hand, right into the chest of the defense. And it's going to be in Drain basketball. Tyler Parrish signaling his inner LeBron James on that block. 3.43 now in this third quarter. Gilvitas hands it off. Austin now driving inside. He's fouled and counted. What a finish right there. Alex Austin, 5'7". Who cares? He's a, he's a solid 5'7". Like we said, he's shifty. He can change direction. Well, you every, said it. Every time he changed direction, you change speed, right? He's got a little burst, a little you, energy burst. You mentioned it. The senior class is what's going to lead this team, and that's what's been leading the team tonight. Elijah Jackson, Alex Austin, and Aiden Austin. You know, those three guys have been vocal points on the team tonight, and they're all seniors. As he's able to hit that free throw, Gilvitas checks out, Jackson checks back in. Yeah, and they play like seniors. You know, they, they play like seniors are supposed to. Yeah. Good leaders. They're solid, they're composed, they don't look rattled. You know what I mean? They, mm -hmm. they look like they're even keeled. 33-29 now. There's, the, there's that play, the and, little and bread and butter Sims. play for Sims. There's going to be a foul, foul on the ground. Basket does not count. That's the, I believe, the fourth team foul by Andrean. The hard part about that, Coach, is, Coach Austin's yelling, you got to help, but when the ball's on the top of the key, where do you help from? Right? Yeah. Are you helping in from the wings? Right? That's that's the hard part with that play. Well, right there. Right off the baseline pass. Sims finishes at the rim. Important to know that was Elijah Jackson's third foul of the game. So 33-31 yeah. now. That's where that play is so effective because it, it's hard to help on it. Mm -hmm. Finley, quick first step, but he's going to hand it off to Austin. Austin able to split the defenders, and that's Parrish on the foul. There was no need for it. He, he, he had jumped. He hedged. He was jumping the handoff there and had a little trap. And, now, and he just reached out and grabbed him. And now Andrean has free throws for the rest of the quarter. There you go. That's the second foul by Tyler Parrish. That's what sometimes that's what happens when you're the, uh, again, we said it earlier, when you're, when you're the aggressor, mm -hmm. good things happen. And what also is impressive for Andrean, although they are small, they're able to split the defenders on the help defense as Austin misses that one. And that's what drew the foul. He split the defenders. Parrish. He was just in a bad spot because he was trying to stop him from getting past him. Yeah. But that quickness, that speed, allows you to have that ability to go right through the middle. That, 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 it kind of goes back to that saying, low man wins, right? Austin. Can't Just hit. the both. Oh, yeah. Tough but, break right there. Yeah, but he stays low to the ground and penetrates low. And that's gonna uh, force the defense to move their feet or just reach out and grab. And Parrish just grabbed on that one. Drain, they started this quarter with the lead. Oh, that's a charge. Drives inside, and there is a charge. Good call. That's number three on Tyler Parrish, and it was, I believe that was Finley who was standing right there. You need, to, you need to kind of make a mental note of this time because yeah. this is that, this is right around that area mm -hmm. that East Chicago kind of do the same thing. They okay. started slowly pulling away. And they just started chesting and started making unforced errors. You know, that, that was not necessary right yeah. there. Yeah. Finley, I think he's okay with taking those hits. He's taking harder hits in his day. Yeah. 
33-31, now under three minutes, and Drayen leads. This will be a big-time win for them on the road. Austin driving to his left, and we'll have a timeout by the 59ers. It's going to be a quick one called by head coach Aaron Austin. We'll take a timeout as well. The 59ers lead 33-31. You're watching us on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. This box is small, like Pet Supplies Plus. This one is large, like a big box store. In each, Stu, I Stu, has carefully hidden a toy. Question is, which dog will find it first? <laughs> Moose, no, you were so close. Thirty-three, thirty-one. as we get to an important stretch here in the third quarter. It's Andrean's basketball. Quick timeout was called by Aaron Austin. And one thing for Chesterton that we're going to have to highlight, Tyler Parrish is off the court. He's on the bench, three fouls. How do they look without him? That's going to be the big key. Well, again, you got to, to, Tobias Ray's going to have to step up. He's had an off night. I know it's asking a lot of a freshman, but yeah. uh, he's got to step up. Well, there's Gilvitas. He has stepped up tonight. Finds Triplet, hands it off to Aiden Austin, back to Gilvitas up top. Gilvitas, Austin to Finley. Finley to Aiden Austin, pump fakes it, back to Finley. Finley on that baseline, nice pass inside. Triplet can't finish at the rim, gets his own rebound, goes up again, and he's fouled. That's going to be either on Picorni or Sims. We'll see. Where? Oh, they're going to get Nathan Nix on that one, actually, his first. Yeah, that, that, that started with the uh, penetration of Finley, though, Yeah, on the baseline. That was a great, again, he's very he's got the, some spurtability, right? He, he's explosive. And it's also, I think, a credit to the communication and what they practice because you don't make those plays unless you know and you trust your teammates going to be in that spot. Yeah, and you're talking about, as we said, you're talking about these seniors on this team. Uh, but Finley is only a junior. Yeah. And Triplett, like I said, he's only a sophomore. And he doesn't look like one. He, no, he went to the rim like he was a senior right he's, there. He's, a big, he's got big arms and big legs. He's a big big kid. Triplett goes two for two from the line. So Aiden Austin and Alex Austin will check out. Micah Jones and Jaden Holmes check in for and drain. So this is the first time we're not seeing any of the Austin brothers on the court. So no Austin brothers and no Parrish here with two minutes to go in the third quarter. Yeah, see if you can get to the fourth quarter with them. But... Uh, well, there's Sims driving to the rim. Glass short. Offensive rebound by Nix. But a steal be right there. Holmes with the basketball. Micah Jones now with oh. it. Pass too high. Till Govitas uh, for Jones. He got a little too cute right there with yeah. that pass. He was trying to make one of those 2K it, passes. It was a good look. He just yeah. went in a little, little, too, uh, little too much on it. Trying to do one of those no looks. But 35-31 now. Your screen look on the high low here for Sims. Got Thought about it. Driving inside. Sims now. Sims. Govitas has done a really good job on him in the past couple minutes. He just, he's just pushing him out farther yeah. than he wants to be. Inside the Knicks. Screen from Sims. Now he has the basketball on the wing. A lot of time taken off the clock. Good defense by Andrean. Nowhere to go. This 59er defense is stifling right now. Really good, really good 59er defense. I'm yeah. impressed by their half-court defense. And this is giving them momentum now. The team's getting into it. The crowd's getting into it. Sure. Up top, big three. No good. Sims offensive rebound going inside and there finishes the reverse slam. Sims. Great job, great effort by Sims. He, he should be a double-double guy, Yeah. right? He should be... Uh, double digits, rebounds, and points, and he's got to live down there. He's got to get his get his points and his numbers down there. 35-33 now, 40 seconds and counting. Micah Jones now with it. He already has a three-pointer in today's oh. game. You had Triplett on that cut to the basket wide open. Yeah, we saw that, didn't we? Govitas now taking his time. I think he's just going to let that time click and let the offense operate a little bit. Get set. I mean, you have the lead. I mean, that's the worst thing that can happen if you take the last shot. You have the lead. Yeah, and Chesterton gets the ball in the, in the next quarter, yeah. so you want to get a good shot here. Run your run your favorite set. Jones moves to his left, and a foul right there. A foul. By Nix. 
They're, so they're going to shoot two free throws. Nick's on the foul. Coach Mark Urban, he cannot believe it. Almost falling to the ground right in front of us. But 9.7, that's his second foul on Nick. So Gilvitas, who has really been the leader of this team today, with the way he's played, will go to the line for two shots. Tyler Parrish makes his way to the score table with 9.7, but two free throws await as the first one is good. So Parrish will check in for Anthony Gonzalez and Elijah Jackson. He's going to check in, I want to say, yeah, for Micah Jones. We talked about it. It's a big stretch here. Yeah. We talk about it all the time. The last two minutes of a quarter and in the, in the first couple minutes of the next quarter, this stretch is very important here. Gilvitas able to knock the second one down, 37-33. Here comes Parrish. Driving inside, behind the back, mid-range, contested two, no good. Rebounded by Triplett, he by Finley, he had some time. Oh! Jimmy Finley, what in the world? Are you kidding me? Jimmy Finley, what a shot. We got a top 10 play right there. We got to see that one. 2.7 seconds. When he shot the basketball, he don't care. He can hit that one. Wow. What a shot. He calls bank, and we call a break. As we're going to take one here, and Drayden leads 40-33 to in what should be one exciting fourth quarter here on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Four Seasons Mechanical proudly serves Northwest Indiana, providing quality, reasonably priced, reliable service. With a quality and comfort guarantee, the professionals at Four Seasons Mechanical offer a wide range of services in heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Whether it's residential or commercial, Four Seasons Mechanical is there 24-7. To find out more, the website is fourseasonsmechanical.com or give them a call at 219-756-7020. Four Seasons Mechanical, your indoor air quality specialist. 40-33 and Drayen leads and I don't know if you can have a more an exciting and emphatic end to a quarter four in Drayen than that 3-4 shot by Jimmy Finley. He had 2.7 seconds to shoot the ball off of a contested mid-range by Tyler Parrish off the glass and in and now they have a seven point lead all of a sudden. Yeah. You think that you think they practice that? You think they practice? <laughs> you think they practice that shot? I think Jimmy Finley's practiced that shot on his driveway for way too long. Well, if he's doing that, he's got a long <laughs> driveway. First of all, <laughs> and a foul already called right here. They're going to get Alex Austin on that one. So already with six seconds to go, Coach Irvin's almost getting. He's getting close to getting a technical foul. I mean, it, it, it's been he, he is in Sean Treese's ear. There's, there's and it's, if he calls, and then obviously when that play happens, you're down by seven. You know, the emotions, the, tens the tension, it's high intensity. It, it gets to you. Yeah, and you're trying. He's trying to get his guys to be intense and get yeah. after it and make a point here with the officials. But right now, his, his teams are just getting outplayed yeah. right now. Good defense right now by Andrean. Parrish falls to the ground, and Urban, I mean, right there, he's very upset. Parrish fell, and there's a uh, legal screen set by number 11, Tobias Ray. That's it. And Again. You, and, I mean, you see it right now. He is, he, he's he, got four. He is he's got really four. giving the official a full mouth right here. Yeah. Again, he's got a. And you got to wonder, what is the limit for an official? Well, these guys know uh, Coach Urban and, you know, and vice versa, so they're going to give him a little bit, but yeah, they, I mean, they, they'll only take so much. But he, he's got to remain composed, so his boys remain yeah. composed too. I mean, for There's that, a long way to go here. I mean, it was 30, for 30 seconds, he was talking to the same official about that play. Right, but you got to you got to move forward. But a big chance here for Drain. I mean, a three-pointer makes this a 10-point game all of a sudden. And all of a sudden, there's Finley. Corner three, no good. And a foul. And it looks like Triplett's going to be charged with that one. Looks like Finley, the corner three is a little too short for him. He needs a, he needs a little bit of a longer three Yeah, point. he can't use the backboard from there, right? <laughs> well, Watts will check in for Chesterton. Right, but remember I said, this is that stretch. It was like 33 yeah. to 30. It's a very important time right here for, for both teams. 
This is kind of when the wheels fell off against uh, East Chicago. Finley right there. Oh, oh going right. up in the stands. Where are you going? Hello, hello. Buy a ticket. <laughs> Good hustle by Finley. Yeah, I mean. He's been all over the place. He, he, saw that, he saw that pass before Rose even passed. I mean, he's got that quick. He's got the intangibles to be a great basketball player. I mean, a three-sport athlete, he's got every ability to be good. Sims almost loses it inside. That's a tough finish and able to make it. I like that finish. He went, went right through his chest. We've talked about that. That was that was a, a physical move, and that's what I want to see Sims doing. 40-35 now, and you can kind of feel the crowd for Chesterton and the, the team getting into this game. Triplet driving inside. Can't finish. Also. Kind of an ill-advised shot. Tried to draw the foul on Sims, but a good job by the senior to keep his hands up. Yeah, he stayed, he stayed vertical there. Parrish now. Finley on him. Goes to Watts. Back to Sims. To Parrish. Finley and Parrish has been a fun matchup to watch tonight. Oh, Parrish driving inside. Nowhere to go. Goes to the corner, though. Ray with it. Back to Parrish up top. Yeah, there has been. A, there's been a lot of fun matchups with, uh, yeah. with Finley, Parrish and with Finley, Finley and Parrish. You know, both and uh, Gabitis and uh, and Sims. There's Parrish mid range two knocks it down. And when you're down in the fourth quarter, you call Tyler Parrish and he picks up the phone. Yeah, that's that's a nice little ten footer, but uh, that's what a big shot does. Your all state guy. Yeah. That's what he should be doing. 4-0 run for Chesterton. 40-37 now. Austin goes to Govitas. Govitas dribbling it back out. And it looks like we'll get a timeout call by head coach Aaron Austin. A 30-second 40 and drain 59ers. We'll take a timeout as well here on the Region Sports Network. The only game in town. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso is a leader in athletics apparel and equipment sales. With in-house production, including screen printing, trophies, embroidery, and more, Blythe's can help you to create the perfect look. For more information, visit them online at teamblythe's.com. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso, where the athletes shop. Transaudio Mobile Music helps you celebrate. Our pro DJ is playing an entertaining mix of music for wedding receptions, wedding ceremonies, anniversary, birthdays, and corporate parties. We use pro gear like Bose, Chauvet Lights and Atmospherics, and Shure Microphones. We introduce the Giphy Busy Booth, the most fun and brandable photo booth in the region. Book us at trans-audio.com. Trans-audio.com. Highly rated at Wedding Pro and by thousands of customers. Now celebrating 40 years. Back here, fourth quarter, 5.30 to go. Don't stop believing, roars through the gym as Chesterton. They can't stop believing. They need to know they have a chance in this game. They're only down by three. They played this quarter very well. They're on a 4-0 run currently. You see, they're, they're coming in to play in Chicago next summer, man. Wow, there you go. That's a hot ticket. There's Watts on the steal. Spin move fouled. Austin on that one. That's a third team foul. Chesterton, they've had the upper hand here in this fourth quarter. That's the fifth foul, or the shade my bad, that's the second foul on Aiden Austin. But three team fouls already. Is that law play? Yeah. Sims now on Jackson, driving inside. Sims blocked by Jackson. Nice one there by the senior. He has a hand cast, but he's playing just as, as good as you'd think. Sims like the, uh, to Parrish. Parrish, tie, game, no good. Jackson there with the rebound. Alex Austin with the rebound. Big possession here for Andrean. Yeah. Finley now. Finley trying to find some room to operate. Hands it off to Austin. Taking their time here, now goes to Aiden Austin. Goes to Govitas inside. Floater two, can't go in. Sims grabs the rebound. Yeah, you catch that in, the, in, in a kind of a weird area where you're on the baseline where you can't use yeah. the, the backboard. Parrish now driving oh, he, inside. He's he fouled it. from behind. 
Basket's no good. He'll head to the line. Four two shots. Yeah, some gonna get yeah sorry. So, some so post players catch the ball too deep, and you catch it in a spot where you can't use the glass, and that's just not as good as a shot. If he would have caught it a step above the block, you could use the backboard on both sides. They're going to get Jimmy Finley on the foul right there. That's his third, team's fourth. So next foul, and Kesterton will be shooting free throws as Parrish hits the first one. I'm sure that has something to do with uh, the Andrean defense, but that's what some some people would say. Well, Coach Urban's over here working the refs, and he's getting calls now. And It could be. A little bit of a, but like as we said, these officials are are some of the best up here in Northwest Indiana, and uh, we're lucky to have them here tonight. Both makes both 40 39 now. Jackson will sub out for East Chicago, and Nix checks out for Chesterton. So Micah Jones, a senior, checks in, averaging nine points a game. He has a three pointer made already. A little bit of a press right now by Chesterton. Micah Jones with it. Picked up his dribble, he's got to find somewhere to go. Finley now with it. Aiden Austin now, and able to break that one and get it across half court successfully. They still had the lead in the ball, but you, yep. can't, you can't take the air out of the ball here. You got to keep attacking. Austin dribbling, moving his way left. Block from behind, Gilvitas with the rebound, and finishes at the rim. Gilvitas once again creating second chance points. Yeah, the defensive possession's not over until you have the ball, right? You gotta stay and you gotta stay active until you have the basketball. Well, there's Paris driving inside, finishes at the rim. And that was a nice change this, of direction. This is Tyler Parrish mode right here. Well, yeah. Austin now numbers four to 59ers to slow things down. 42, 41, 3, 27 and counting. He's playing straight up here. Yeah, Chesterton, they need a big defensive stop here. Long way to go. Chesterton's only got one team foul. Big size advantage. He got 5-7 Austin against 6-5 Sims. Oh, they they got to switch now. back, yeah. Yeah, but you still got Aiden Austin on with Sims right there. Austin, Watts on him. Dribbles back out. Three minutes now and counting. Goes towards his left. Driving inside at the rim, off the glass and in, Alex Austin. Yeah, you, that's what we talked about. You, you can't allow penetration right through the middle. Inside to Sims, Gilvitas on him, Sims short. Got to use the backboard. Parrish, three, tie game, no good. Sims can't handle it, tries to save it. And it's off of Aiden Austin, and it will stay with the Trojans. Yeah, Sims, you got to use the backboard underneath the volleyball line down there. That's the second three this quarter where Tyler Parrish has had a chance to tie the game. The three-pointer hasn't really been great for him. He's done a really good job finishing at the rim, though, here in the second half. Yeah, that intermediate length, right? So Parrish now back with the basketball. We're getting closer to the finale of this one, 2.30 to go. Try Watts. to get inside. Got, they're helping off yeah. a lot. They're really doubling inside on Sims. Parrish. Helping off a of Knicks. Yep. Parrish up top. Here's the screen from Knicks. Finley on him. Parrish, Watts, corner, three. We are tied. Jalen Watts. High energy. Now he was the guy I thought played well last week against East Chicago. Didn't get very minutes, but he was really good while he was out there. Two threes on the night so far for the 6-1 sophomore. And we are Tied. We'll stay right here with 2.12 to go. Let's get you caught up. 44-44. Chesterton, they only have one team foul. And Drayen, they have four team fouls. So Chesterton, next time they get fouled, they'll be going to the line for two shots for Chesterton. Clutch shot by Jalen Watts, but it's been Tyler Parrish. It's been Justin Sims. Four in Drayen. It's been a plethora of guys. Elijah Jackson's defense in the paint. Aiden and Alex Austin have been huge as well. Don't forget about Paul Gilvitas. Right. You know, this has been an all-team effort by Andrean. They had a seven-point lead going into this fourth quarter, and quickly it's gone. Yeah, I, I like how Sims is playing more in the paint. I like the, the uh, you know, you haven't heard much from Bacorny here tonight. He He's usually a pretty, uh, really good shooter in the corner along with Ray. Uh, so they've just found a way to compete tonight. You know, again, they're not playing their best. They're, yeah. they're still out of sync. But they're, they're, they're just finding a way to stay in this ballgame. 
And like you mentioned, that's got a lot to do with Parrish and how he's playing right now. Well, you have both teams with senior leaders. Yeah. Which leaders are going to step up in a tie game with 2.12 to go? Yeah, right. And and, and then who's who are the other guys that are going to contribute? You know, like you've got Jalen Watts, like you mentioned, and you've got, you know, all the, the, the athleticism that Andrean's got. Aiden Austin now, leading scorer for the 59ers. He had two 30-point games last year, averaging 17 a game. Gives it to his brother Alex Austin. They seem to have an up when, when uh, Finley catches it on the wing. He can he can get to the basket. So that might be a, a matchup that they want to try to take advantage of down here, down the stretch. Do you think Andrean could get a little conservative here, try and waste the clock a little bit? Micah Jones pump fakes it, pass inside, and it's stolen. And Chesterton now a chance to take the lead. Well, you see if they might hold it, see how long they're going to hold it. Yeah, costly turnover for the 59ers. But Corny Look gives it to Parrish. Parrish drives to his right. Finley on him. Driving inside. Parrish and finishes. 46-44. A minute to go. Micah Jones now with it. Had a chance. They had numbers, but they'll slow things down. Micah Jones now driving towards his right. Aiden Austin now with it, a minute and counting left. Austin driving inside and fouled from behind. They're going to get Logan Picorni on that one. Again, we've talked about how he's good using his body. He's good at finding yeah. contact, right? Some guys try to avoid contact. He's good at finding contact and getting to the free throw line. So Aiden Austin, the leading scorer, can't hit the first free throw. And if I'm correct, he had a, a trip to the free throw line where he missed both free throws. Yeah, he's, he's had a rough night from the stripe tonight. Chesterton stands getting in this game. The second one is good. So we'll convert that one 46 See if Andre picks up. Yeah, see if they get a couple traps here. Yeah, here we you, go. Don't, you don't got to foul right away. And there uh, is the foul right away. It's going to be on Finley. You see Aaron Austin. I mean, he's not arguing with the call. He's arguing with Finley. Yeah, just Finley, play. Finley didn't think he contacted him, but That's Aaron Austin said, yeah, you, you hit him with your arm. Yeah, you got to move your feet and stay in front. He's got four fouls now. Yeah. No matter what, it's still a one-possession game, and if they, if he does make both, you don't got to go get three yet. You don't got to – you still got a long way to go here. That first Parrish has to hit these. That first one is good. Just a key player for this team. And if you're chested in, you still got two team fouls. Mm -hmm. So you have yep. you have some fouls to play with. Parrish can't oh. hit the second one. So a two-point game, 47-45, 50 seconds to go. Looks like we have a timeout called here on the floor by Andrean. So Andrean calls a timeout. They also do have the possession arrow to keep that in mind. But if you're Aaron Austin, what are you drawing up right now? I think you want to go pretty quick. You don't want to hold it on, too, hold it for too long, mm -hmm. to make it in a position where you have to scramble and foul and send then Chester into the line. But uh, I think you're going to try to find a way to create and get around people. You you've done a pretty good job of driving yeah. and getting around people, and a lot of it, it it was from the top of the key. You know when they when it was hard to find help side from the top, but Finley's had to, uh, yeah. you know his way from the wing. So they just got to be aggressive. They, yeah. they, like you said, they kind of. Not that they're playing not to win or mm -hmm. playing not to lose, but they've, they're, they, they're not as aggressive now yeah. as they were in the first quarter. Remember to stay tuned after the game. We'll name our crowd company's Lantern Man superhero of the game, our Boilermakers Local 374 Blue Collar. Player of the game in the IKORCC Proud Union. Home play of the game, although I think we know which that one will be. Who knows, though? It's been a fun one here at Chesterton High School. We could very well see... A very close finish. Two-point game. Andrean trails. They have the basketball. They have the possession arrow. No, a name we haven't said in this fourth quarter for Andrean is Gilvitas. Yeah. He's been kept quiet in this quarter. Yeah, they've matched up on him pretty well. And they're being very physical with him as well. Yeah. He, he's catching it not in a position to score. Mm -hmm. Now Tyler Parrish, he does have three personal fouls. So he has a little wiggle room. So Alex Austin now. You got Watts on him, who hit the tying three a couple minutes ago. 
Got Micah Jones, Sims is on him. Yeah, I don't think you want to wait too long. Micah Jones off the screen, Parrish on him now, Gilvitas with it. Gilvitas trying to find somebody, really having a hard time. He's got to pass the ball. They are able to call timeout. Wow. Just in time, but great defense right there by Chesterton to almost force that violation by the Andrean 59ers. So you're back in the huddle. You're back into, you know, your timeout group. Obviously what they drew up was not working. So now what do you draw up? You got to find, uh, you know, a set play. Again, you got to, wherever you want the ball, you got to, you know, wherever you want to attack from, you got to set a couple double screens or a, a baseline screen. But it, it's more it's, it's, it's more about who wants to take the shot, yeah. right? You, you got to be aggressive right here and have a mindset of, I, I want the ball. I'm not going to hide from the ball over mm -hmm. in the corner, right? Or I'm not going to cut kind of like I want the ball. I, yeah. I got to act like I want to be the dude right here. Whether it's a two or a three, I think you can penetrate. You've mm -hmm. been penetrating all night, but Cheshire has got pretty good help side, uh, you know, help side defense, and they've um, last few years have been really strong on the defensive end. So, yeah. and with the size in there, so just a reminder: we'll be live Friday night from two men's basketball games. We'll be live here at Chesterton High School at 6:30 for Penn and Chesterton, and we'll be live at 7 p.m. at East Chicago for Maryville at East Chicago. And you can find those games here on the Region Sports Network, whether you're watching on Facebook.com slash Region Sports, YouTube.com slash Region Sports, or RegionSports.com. 24.9 left on the that, clock. That, that, that uh, Maryville East Chicago game is going to be a doozy. That's yep. going to... So Finley will pass the ball out. Goes to Micah Jones. Sims on him. Really playing up tight. They only got two team fouls. They can yeah. be aggressive. Jones driving inside. Nowhere to go. Finds Aiden Austin for the game. No. Finley, the floater, no good. Gets his rebound. Block. Oh. No. There's a foul. Got to block out. You got to find somebody. You got to find a body. Wow. Turn around and block out. You can't allow him three times. Three shots down the floor. They're actually going to get Jalen Watts on the foul. Two shots for Finley with 7.2 left on the clock. He needs both of them. Well, I'll tell you, if he make them both, Parrish is going to go get it. Yep. They run this, they call Bama. They run a little loop here, and he's going to go pushing up the right-hand side. Finley can't hit the first. And you at least need the second to make this still a one-possession game. Yep. Free throws and layups, you got to make those to compete. So Finley misses the first. Can he hit the second? Make this a one point game with seven seconds to go. It's up. And no good. Sims pulls down the rebound and gets fouled. So for Andrean, they've missed their last three of the four free throws they've taken. And a couple of times before this fourth quarter, they had empty trips to the line. Now Sims, it's not the greatest free throw shooter, so the irony is... Make the is, first one. He wants yeah. to make the first one, kind of gets the pressure off the second one. If you're in drain, you're fine with him making at least one. It keeps it one possession game. Aiden Austin, though, on that three, maybe a little ill-advised. That was a deep shot. Sims misses oh, wow. the first free throw. If, I, if I'm, maybe, if I'm Coach Urban, if he makes this, I maybe call a timeout. This well, is the, this is that whole theory of well, do I foul? There he is. He's going to call it right now. I was going to say before Andrean, they have no timeouts. Yeah. So now this gives Andrean a timeout to draw something up here. Right. But if you make this, you got a three point lead. Yep. There's a whole lot of debate here, Jack. If you if, foul. Do you foul and don't let him shoot the three? Mm hmm. Right. Five point four. But if he misses Andrean, they're going to have to really push the tempo. I mean. They do have the skies with speed to do it, but it's going to be tough. And it's only they only have three team fouls. Yeah. So if it's a miss, I mean, while he's driving, about half court, you can foul. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure he's not shooting it. He's not going to shoot from half court. But So for Chesterton, at this next free throw, do you have anybody lined up? Or are they all lined up back near the half court line getting ready? That's a good question. I think I think you get everybody back. Because Cause, obviously cause you your best rebounder is shooting a free throw. Yeah, right? you I can mean, force an offensive rebound, an extra possession if you have guys there. But say you miss it, 
you have a guy that's faster than most of the guys on Chester Kids, right. you're going to have to beat him to the rim. Yeah. And again, the, I think the biggest, maybe the most important thing here is there's only three team fouls for Chester. Yeah. They can foul. They can still, they can trap. Mm -hmm. You know, they can trap around half court. They can do something. Well, they are going to line up. So you have Parrish and uh, Saris Necky lining, lining up. You have also, no, they're going to change it. Watts is actually going to come in and line up as well. So you have Saris Necky. That's, an, uh, that's a good point that you made. I don't, I don't know if I would have anybody up on Here's the lane. Here's the second free throw. Sims does make it. Three-point game, 5.4. Here's a little bit of a press right now by Chesterton. Jones is wide open on that side. We'll see if they foul here. Goes to Finley off the hands and out of bounds. Yep, they don't have to. And a costly turnover. And Drayan now with the basketball with 1.2 seconds. You had Finley open in that corner. They rushed the pass. And it looks like we'll have a substitution. They Watts got six on the court out. right now. Somebody's got to get off. Yeah, someone, that's six people. Sarsnecki's going to come out. All you got to do is get the ball in bounds. Yeah. They'll probably throw it long. 1.2. There it There's is. There's the long pass. It's going far. Parrish. He didn't go out of bounds. And go. that's going to be it. A close one near the baseline. Some good hang time by him to keep the clock rolling. But a huge and close win by the Trojans. 48-45. What a game. That was here tonight. Now let's name our RSN Award winners. We'll start with the Crow Company's Lantern Man Superhero of the game. And it's got to go with the leader of this team, Tyler Parrish. I yeah. mean, he's the one that keeps him in every game, whether he's, it's his three-point shooting, whether he's finishing at the rim. He's the go-to guy. Everybody knows that. And even every, when everybody knows he gets the basketball, he's still able to finish, and he helped Chesterton end the losing streak tonight. Yeah, I think he had, you know, we've seen, uh, like I said, we saw him play East Chicago. I think this was a step in the right direction yeah. for Chesterton and for Parrish. Uh, he, he played much more composed. Yeah. He didn't get rattled. Uh, he didn't allow Andrean to speed him up, mm -hmm. and, and he had a really good, strong game tonight, and that's why he's our superhero of the game. Yeah, Crowell Companies, they have offices open from 9 to 7 Monday through Friday. And Saturday is still two in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. They're proud to recognize superheroes on the basketball court. Now it's time to name the blue collar player of the game, brought to you by Boilermakers Local 374. We were impressed by him in the early going. I got to go with Paul Govitas. He was really, he really set the tone. Although the fourth quarter wasn't his best quarter, in those first three quarters, he set the tone on offense, defensively. He had great passes. He was able to create second chances, and he hit a couple of threes. Yeah, again, I thought I was really impressed with his play. He was down in the stance, even in help side, active hands, active feet. Yeah. He was efficient with the ball. And, uh, you know, him only being a junior, he was he was undersized all night, guarding mm -hmm. Sims and, and then Knicks. But uh, I was really impressed with his game. And, the, you know, he's our blue-collar player. Yeah, congratulations, Paul Gilvitas. Earn while you learn with Boilermakers Local 374. Learn about apprenticeship programs and more at local374.org. Now it's time to name the proud union home play of the game presented by IKORCC. It should not come to any shock what the play is. A buzzer beater in the third quarter. A 3-4 shot from Jimmy Finley off the glass. Doesn't get any better than that for a play. No, that's you know, the kind of stuff you dream about as a yeah. kid, but... Uh, uh, that's just uh, having the having the guts and having the frame of mind to give it a shot, you know. And it was a big you, shot. You, I mean, you it can't gave, shoot it if you don't make it. It gave them a seven-point lead as well, and all the momentum you could ask for. Yeah, all the way around. I did, I said that backwards. You can't make okay. it if you don't shoot it. I'm gonna make sure I get that right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. great great shot by him. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna probably watch our feed and definitely maybe post on the social media and see if he can get any uh, Sports Center nods on that one. But. IKORCC, the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. Build your future. Learn more at IKORCC.com. A big thank you to our executive producer, Chris Ramirez, our operations manager, Rich Castillo, our coordinating producer, Zach Miller, Zach Zanelli, and Mike Dewan. They did a great job tonight. Mike Dewan on the producing and Zach Zanelli on the camera. For both coaches, for getting us rosters and stats, for Andrean, Aaron Austin, for Chesterton, Mark Urban, and both athletic directors for helping us out. For Andrean, Neil Demos, and Chesterton, Jeff. Hamstra, and you, the viewers, on Facebook.com slash Region Sports, YouTube.com slash Region Sports, and Region Sports.com. Reminder, we have a doubleheader Friday night, Penn at Chesterton, 630, 
Maryville at East Chicago, 7 p.m. Central Time. But for Zach, Mike, Doug, and myself, Jack Thiel, have a great and safe Wednesday night, and we'll see you Friday night here on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town.